Hi, and welcome back to the Online Kids Space Planetarium. As you know, my name is Auntie Kate, and I am your guide for our edition of Nice Guys this week. Our topic this week is on our red planet, Mars. And that is because on Thursday, February 18th, a new rover named Perseverance landed on the red planet. And my friends, there are some super cool plans in store for this rover. So we're going to talk about it. Let's begin. As always, down on the bottom left of our screen is our location, date, and time stamp. You can see that we are still in Westminster, Colorado, and our date is set to one week from the 18th, making it February 25th, another Thursday. And our time is now just about 15 minutes till 6 p.m. or 1800 hours. We can see our sun is beginning to set there on the right. And we know from our previous talks that all of the stars, the moon, the planets, and our sun all appear to rise out of the east and set in the west. So our view here is showing that west is to our right, which leaves east to our left. And for this star tour, we are facing south. And I will prove that to you once we get some stars out. One thing to note is this week our moon is going to be getting brighter and brighter as the week goes on. You can see it there now on the eastern skies, nice and bright. So do keep in mind that with a brighter moon, that means that we are not going to be able to see some of the fainter dots in our skies. But that's okay because we can still use some fairly bright ones to point our way towards Mars at this time. Okay? And to do so, all we need to do is find our hunter, Orion. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop our sky right about here. And you can see at the bottom, we're just about five minutes after 1900 hours or 7 p.m. And I did that because at this point, Orion is at his zenith point. And a zenith point is the point in the sky, a star, a planet, a nebula, a galaxy, a constellation, what have you. It's the highest point they will reach before they start curling back down in our nice skies. And so I'm going to go ahead and select my favorite star of Orion, which is the star Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a super red giant that's massive and also fairly cold in the term, in star terms. But it marks the right armpit of Orion, our hunter. Towards the west, we have the star Bellatrix, which marks our left armpit. Below Bellatrix, we have the bright star Rigel, which marks our left foot. And then towards the east, we have a dim star known as Safe, which marks our right foot. And so together, those stars create our hunter in the sky, Orion. And of course, here's a nice little image for you. My system does show that he has a lion in his left hand and a club in his right. But most star shows will actually show that the lion's a shield and the club is a sword. As he is actually battling Taurus the bull in our night skies. And before we find Taurus, let's go ahead and use Orion to find south. And all we need to do is starting from the middle star of our belt. We just need to draw a line through the Orion Nebula, which is this faint group of stars right about here. And by doing so, we actually point our way straight south, which is really nice. So that's how we can verify we are indeed looking south. And then by using the belt, we can this time draw a line through each of the belt stars. And this time, shoot towards the western skies, and we'll come to the red eye of Taurus the Bull, which is the star Aldebaran. And Taurus is fairly faint. He'll be harder to see with a full moon out, but that's okay. We will be able to notice that on Taurus's back here is an open cluster of stars. And this cluster has a lot of names. More commonly, it's known as the Seven Sisters, or the Pleiades. In Hawaii, it's known as Makali'i, as this is part of a star line known as Kika'o Makali'i, the great baler of Makali'i. And in Japan, it's known as Subaru. 
So if you drive a Subaru or if you know someone who does, that emblem of stars on the car is that open up cluster there. And right below that open cluster of stars is our red planet, Mars. And so we're going to go ahead and zoom in on that planet. To do so, we need to get rid of ground because where we're going, we don't need the ground, which means we also don't need those cardinal points. And heck, why not? Let's get rid of the atmosphere. So I'm going to rotate our screen, bring Mars a little bit more center, and then we're going to go ahead and blast off. So here is our red planet, Mars. Mars, of course, is our fourth planet from the sun. It's smaller than our Earth, but we believe it might have been pretty similar to our Earth early on in the formation of the solar system. We know there's water underneath the surface. We found out last year this planet's actually still ge geologically active. It's not dormant. Okay, dormant means, of course, to sleep. And I went ahead and stopped the rotation here because there's some cool features to point out real quick. One is called what I like to call the giraffe. And you can kind of see it there on the bottom part of our screen. And this is known as Valles Marineris, the Valley of Mars. And it's so large that if I had some fancy space scissors and I cut that canyon off of Mars and stuck it on our Earth, end to end, it would go from New York City all the way to Los Angeles, California. Huge. And then right above it, you can see a line of three gray dots and then a nice big dot there a little bit higher, making kind of a triangle on the planet. These are volcanoes. And that big dot you see at the point of our triangle is the largest volcano in our entire solar system, Olympus Mons, Mount Olympus. It is so large that if I use those fancy space scissors, but this time to cut Olympus Mons, Mons off of Mars and stick it on the Earth, it would cover the entire state of Utah and then some. It's huge, my friends. Now, we're getting close to the landing site of Perseverance. And Perseverance is going to Mars to look for ancient life that might have been on the planet when it had water. It will also study the, the climate of the planet by sending, I kid you not, a helicopter out. This is the first helicopter on a planet other than the Earth. So that alone is super exciting. And that helicopter is going to study the climate and see how Mars, how the weather patterns on Mars happen throughout its lifetime. It's going to be super neat. And then the rover Perseverance is also going to start making it possible to make it so that humans can eventually live on this planet. We're going to test some stuff out with that rover. And so it's super, super neat. If you can't tell, I'm super excited about this. I mean, my friends, it's a helicopter on Mars. And it just touched base with NASA not too long ago saying everything's fine and dandy. And in the next 60 days, they might send it out for a flight. So that's super exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and end the star show by showing you where Perseverance has landed. And so you can see up there towards the north part, what looks like this kind of black mark that kind of shoots straight down. And if we hit the end of that black mark, and at least with this view, just shoot straight across towards our left. I selected the Sedona Crater, but that's not the crater that Perseverance landed, but that's roughly the area it landed. The crater Perseverance landed in is called the Jezero Crater, and it's actually super neat. At that point, there is an old water delta. And we can see evidence of where there was a river, and this river fed into a lake right at that point. And so that's where Perseverance is, to see if it can find some old ancient life, some microbial life. So this is pretty exciting, and wanted to definitely show you out. And sorry, made the star tour a little bit longer this time around, but still always exciting to see.
And so with that, that will be the end of our star tour. Of course, if you would like to have a special shout out for one of the kiddos in your family for their birthdays, you are more than welcome to shoot me an email at kate.hall at kidspacelaunch.org. And I will be more than happy to make the announcement for you. Of course, if you do enjoy our Star Tour programs, please help us stay open by donating to Kids Space Launch so we can still provide this to you. And of course, from all of us here at Kids Space, thank you for watching and happy Stargazing.